AM radio, an op-ed column, and Fox News is not enough. I want a center-right nation to fight for its soul, and its soul is represented in the arts. Its soul is represented in, in a world in which media is everything. AM radio is the lowest form of communication. It's tinny. It's not robust. It's not avatar. I want avatar. I want the right to enter the world of media to the extent and invest in media the way that the left does. The fake media is trying to silence us, but we will not let them because the people know the truth. The fake media tried to stop us from going to the White House, but I'm president and they're not. You're listening to the Kurt Schilling Podcast, a Breitbart.com podcast. The podcast starts now. Here's Kurt with today's headlines. Welcome to another edition of the Kurt Schilling Podcast. Got a great one lined up for you today. You're not going to... You're going to have to brace yourself for, for the, the live sound bites because there's some stupidity of proportions I can't explain. But after that, we're going to have Breitbart's John Nolte and Breitbart's James Dellingpole on today to talk about, well, uh, you'll, you'll hear. It's, it's, it's just another fascinating day uh, exposing the left for the lunacy it is exhibiting on a daily basis. And nowhere does it come uh, more evident than in the sound bites they're giving us every day to run. But we're going to start off with uh, some sound bites. And, and I, I want, I'm going to make a point after this first one. But I want you to listen to Don Lemon, who is supposedly uh, a college educated man. Listen to what he has to say about Antifa. It says it right in the name Antifa, anti fascism, which is what they were there um, fighting. Listen, there's, you know, no organization is perfect, there was some violence. Um, no one condones the violence, but there were different reasons for Antifa and for these neo-Nazis uh, to be there. One, racist fascists. The other group, fighting racist fascists. There is a fascist. There is a distinction there. No, he's a liar. Fifty years, fifty plus years after the civil rights march. You remember that, right? The civil rights march, which was a march which was took place 100 years after the amendments were given to the Constitution that should have given blacks the same rights as whites had, but Andrew Jackson and the KKK and the Democratic Party saw that not happening. But 50 years after the Civil Rights March, a black man, a college-educated black man in Don Lemon, goes on the air and defends a group of fascists. Antifa is not, just because they call themselves anti-fascist, doesn't have anything to do with, what they do is fascism, plain and simple. They, they shout out, and, and want to know what's even more offensive? That's a group of people that ran a beautiful black woman out of a restaurant, assaulted her, and spit on her less than two weeks ago in Candace Owens. That's who Don Lemon was just defending. And we heard sound yesterday uh, with the left calling Antifa mainly a, a, a group of black. Antifa's not black. Antifa's the, the, the opposite of black. I have very rarely ever seen a picture of Antifa with a black member in it. It's always college-age white kids with no job who are, are, are bitching about their student loans. That's what, what, what Antifa is. But you can't make the stupidity up, and it just goes even farther. And apparently, we now have a new crime on the books. It is apparently against the law to pay a person... To be quiet about an event that has happened between you two. Basically, hush money. It's against the law, according to a soundbite. By the way, that first was, uh, the first soundbite was from CNN tonight. This was from MSNBC's Andrea Mitchell Reports. I want you to listen to Diane Feinstein, who's just decided to start making up her own laws. Listen up. Is there any, any situation where this could actually play into an obstruction issue to be trying to push sessions out, which could lead to the firing of Rod Rosenstein, which could lead to a domino effect that would affect the mother probe. Well, I think that this theory is alive and well, and I think we're going to have to wait and see what Mueller finds. But um, if I understand what Mr. Cohen has said, uh, the president directed him to essentially commit a felony, and um, that's obstruction of justice. So we're going to have to wait and see. 
under the the laws that now obtain, there doesn't necessarily have to be a hearing to replace and confirm a new attorney general because there could be an appointment under the Vacancy Act and he could he or she could be the new attorney general and it could be anyone who has already been confirmed to a position from any department any confirmed uh, office holder could become the acting attorney general uh, for at least a year all i can say to that andrea is wow i certainly didn't know that and i've been here for a while and i try to do my work congratulations um, but uh, that's a that's a real problem as I see it, because there should be public hearings on whoever, whomever takes this office. Um, I certainly hope the president isn't going to do this. Uh, I, you know, this idea that the president gives uh, the head of the Justice Department orders is one that I don't subscribe to either. The law is the law, and all these people at Justice are there to carry out the law. Um, they're not members of the president's staff. No, they're actually not the members of the president's staff. They're members of the former administration staff who conspired to make sure this president didn't get elected. Diane Feinstein's dumb. I, I don't know any other way to put that. She's just dumb. Paying somebody money to be quiet about an event and, and signing an NDA to do so, there's nothing illegal about that. You heard, I mean, we had an attorney on. We Alan Dershowitz basically explained the, there is nothing even remotely related to a crime and anything that happened with the payment or the reimbursement. Nothing. It has nothing to do with he used his own personal money, which was he was using for his campaign. There is no crime there. They're just making shit up now. And they're making it up because they're mad. And did you notice that Andrea Mitchell just gave Diane Feinstein a course in uh, uh, potential appointments? For a woman that's been in the Senate for, what, over over a millennium? Over a thousand years? She's like 1,200 years old, I think. Anyway, on to the next one. Uh, Chicago 107.5 WGCI was the home of some comments and quotes I would I am, am dying for you guys to hear about. On Wednesday, rapper Kanye West. I've never been a fan of Kanye West, and I'll never be a fan of his music. But I'll tell you what, I sure as hell have gained some respect for the man. Uh, I, I respect any man who has the, the spine to stand up for what he believes in, whether I agree with it or not. Well, listen, I'm just going to let him say it to you. Listen up. Two of the most black vocal Trump supporters are Mayweather and Kanye West. And I think we got a lot of things in common. Self-made. And we don't move like, we don't move, act, and think like African Americans. We move, and act, and think like Africans in America. Because... We, this is not programmed to be our country, but we can make it ours. Like Farrakhan said, it's like it's to be bought. I just bought 300 acres for, for only $7 million. 300 acres. I'm looking, I'm, I'm finding a, you know, an, uh, another 1,000 acres right now to build our first school on our campus. I am buying America and making it mine. The land of the free. Everybody's not in a position right. to make those purchases, though. Right. Yeah, we know that everyone is not in a position, but if I said a joke or said, gave you, you know, some information about Drake, we'd all be laughing about it and think that's cold. But if I say something to you about this is what I'm doing and you can see, since people like to see people that are particularly of the uh, same culture, because they, they, they act like we can't be inspired by nobody that's not our cu culture. Now, I love Michael Jordan, but I'm more inspired by Steve Jobs. I connect more with Steve Jobs than I connect to Michael Jordan. Kanye, we're going to move on, but I do want to ask this direct, simple yeah. question because it was a question that Jimmy Kimmel asked on the show, and I saw you say on Twitter you weren't given the amount of time to properly answer it. And he used, you know, a quote, a famous quote that you said that George Bush doesn't care about black people. Mm -hmm. Do you feel as though Donald Trump cares about all people, black people included? I feel that he cares about the way black people feel about him and he would like for black people to like him like they did when he was cool and the rap songs and all this and stuff and, yeah and he and he will do the things that are necessary to make that happen because he's got an ego like all the rest of us and he doesn't he he wants to be the greatest president and he knows that he can't be the greatest president without the acceptance 
of the black community. So okay. it's something that he's going to work towards. But we're going to have to speak to him. Yeah, because he's gonna, not doing a good yeah, job. We're gonna, well, let me go with you the next time you go to the White House. I, good good job. Job. I need to go with you to the White House. and I got a couple things I got to say. We Exactly. But at least now you can go. I can't overstate the importance of that soundbite. A black man sitting in a studio with, with other uh, black men and women was making them look at this from a different angle. You know, uh, you could hear the anti-Trump sentiment coming from the host, but did you hear them talk about the fact that, okay, I hear what you're saying. Actually, you know, I'm listening to you. Now, I don't know how much he got into them, but that's a very different reaction that you get when you talk to members of Antifa. And the fact of the matter is, uh, for all you liberals out there that want to scream about a blue wave, let me be very clear about something. If you do any study, any research at all about politics and numbers and votes and polls, you will understand, if you're being honest with yourself, that there is a number. And the number is somewhere in the teens. It was, I was told it was 15%. But there's a number somewhere in the teens that if the black vote moves to the right and votes Republican, and if the number of black votes and the support of the black vote is above 15 percent, we will never in our life again have a Democratic president. The latest polls are showing that the black support for President Trump has gone from six to close to 30 percent. And people like Kanye West, nobody is going to get the word be- across better than him. You've, you've heard the extreme left uh, uh, kick him out. And then you heard earlier, again, you heard Don Lemon praising a group that 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 was literally assaulted one of the most uh, intelligent uh, and, yes, uh, beautiful as a person and beautiful as a woman, uh, Candace Owens. Uh, and Don Lemon was defending the group that, that assaulted her, that spit on her. Kanye West, God bless you, man. I, I don't, I'm not a music guy. I'm a country music dude. But God bless you for what you're doing. Uh, let's flip the channel and go to CNN. And I want you to listen. I don't know. I'm not going to be able to set this up. I just want you to listen to the soundbite, okay? And, and when you hear it, Listen to listen to what's being said. President Trump first jumped on the latest Hillary Clinton conspiracy, which has already been debunked, presumably after seeing this. Now there are reports, and this doesn't surprise me in the slightest, that China was hacking her emails in real time. That was last night. Then right after Fox's Laura Ingram signed off, President Trump parroted the theory in a tweet. Hillary Clinton's emails, many of which are classified information, got hacked by China. The report, as the president called it, actually began before Ingram, when conservative website The Daily Caller claimed that a Chinese company in Washington, acting as a, quote, front group for the Chinese government, had hacked Clinton's private server. And The Daily Caller likely got their story from known conspiracy theorist Texas Congressman Louis Gomer who talked about it last month. The problem was that it was going to an unauthorized source that was a foreign entity unrelated to Russia. Unrelated to Russia or China or, it turns out, to anyone. That's because, according to the FBI, who conducted the investigation into Clinton servers, none of this is true. The Bureau today releasing a statement saying, The FBI has not found any evidence the servers were compromised. And that's not the only conspiracy theory the president's been promoting over the past few days. Just yesterday, before dawn, Mr. Trump turned his sights on Google, tweeting, Google search results for Trump news shows only the viewing reporting of fake news media. In other words, they have it rigged for me and others so that almost all stories and news is bad. Trump was parroting an article by a conservative blog and a report on Fox Business. Google blatantly suppressing conservative media outlets from Americans searching for Trump. Sure sounds nefarious, but there's a problem. There's no real evidence to support the claim. In fact, Google was forced to respond saying it never ranks search results to manipulate political sentiment. But just like any good conspiracy theory, it lives on. The president this afternoon. I think Google is uh, really taking advantage of a lot of people. And I think Randy K, really CNN, New York. Randy K, you're a liar. First of all, she's citing the FBI investigation that we're watching people getting hauled in front of Congress for because of what it was. It wasn't an investigation. 
It was a scam. It was a setup, and we've we've learned that that's not debatable. That's fact. We've we've seen facts. Hillary Clinton's server was being uh, hacked in real time. Did you notice what she said though? The report, quote, as the president called it. No, the president doesn't didn't have to call it. It's a report. The president called a report. And and you also notice, and I've noticed this uh, uh, time and time again, how hard the left tries to say Mr. Trump instead of President Trump. Just thought, thought that was worth mentioning because they do that often. And we do know that Google and Twitter and Facebook have created algorithms that are, and they've said they're le- they're a, a, an incredibly left leaning group of people. We know Google searches are, are uh, there's an algorithm based in them that that changes based on your political leanings. It, that's not hard to do. We've we've watched James O'Keefe and Project Veritas tell us. But anyway, I want to uh, to close out by recognizing. Uh, on Fox and Friends uh, the other day, uh, former uh, ICE acting director and Fox News contributor Tom Holman. Uh, listen to what – well, first of all, listen to government, Governor Cuomo's repulsive comments. This guy's a, a feckless I, – I don't even want to go there. Anyway, but listen to what he says and listen to his response. New York State is the state that is suing Donald Trump for ripping babies from the arms of their mother. New York State is the state that says we will not cooperate with ICE. They're a bunch of thugs. He politicized ICE. They're a bunch of thugs. We said we will sue them if they violate any criminal laws in the state of New York. Tom, what's your reaction? You you know about political rhetoric, but this has got to be personal for you. That is personal, and I'm not going to sit here and call him names. Uh, I did plenty of that last night under my breath. (laughs) But what he's saying, his actions are disgusting. To call a bunch of to call ICE agents thugs. Think about it. These are men and women who are who are fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters, sons and daughters, that chose to enforce laws in this country. Strap a gun to the hip every day and put a Kevlar vest on, to go out to the community, and protect America, and protect, and protect the communities. He calls them thugs. Actually, ICE arrest thugs, MS-13 members, gang members, drug traffickers. Uh, we we arrest over 5,000 criminal aliens off the street in New York. That, that many walked out of his sanctuary jails. So rather than calling them thugs, you know, I'm not asking for anybody to give ICE agents a, a, a slack, but a little, a little recognition, a difficult job they do every day. They put their lines on the country for this country every day. They protect New York every day. He ought to be writing a thank you letter rather than calling them names. It's, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. That was Governor Cuomo, and, and that's a former member uh, of ICE. And I'm going to have a little bit more to say about that later. Um, but we're going to take a short break. And on the flip side, this break is going to be Breitbart's John Nolte. We'll be back in just a minute, guys. Breitbart News Daily with Alex Marlowe. Censorship is a key issue here, particularly for people on the right. Do you think it was addressed adequately? Definitely not. It was useful to name check Diamond and Silk. It was useful to check even politicians who had campaign ads that were shut down. But in every case, Zuckerberg was allowed to essentially dismiss the case and move on. Breitbart News Daily, weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Patriot 125. You're listening to the Kurt Schilling Podcast. Once again, here's Kurt Schilling. Joining me now is someone who's got, uh, well, I've been able to, I've been fortunate enough and lucky enough to get him almost weekly because uh, he is kind of uh, at the tip of the spear when it comes to, to, to exposing the left. Uh, I, I, I get, I'm proud to get to do it every day via sound bites because you can't make this stuff up. One of the icons of the left, the, the, uh, a legendary icon of the left in the media, Carl Bernstein, he of the uh, All the President's Men fame, has been outed. He got outed by, believe it or not, of all things, his source, who he lied about. And, and John, you wrote an article about that. First of all, good morning, and how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good morning to you. You wrote this story, and it is a big deal. Uh, it is a big deal, I think, because of one of the two reasons you stated, which is the fact of the matter is the left and, and the, the, the group of them are, are a left-wing, left-leaning uh, ideological group of frauds. They're lying simply because they can. And Carl Bernstein, the, it, well, you know, I just tweeted at him and said, basically, hey, karma's a bitch, huh? I mean, he, he, he has been outed as a fraud and a liar, and he got outed by his source. I was wondering if you could kind of talk about this. You've got a career in journalism, and I'm wondering if, if you've ever been exposed to something like this. No, I've never seen anything where uh, a source came out and not only said, okay, I lied, but I was the source, especially in a situation like this one where Bernstein 
lied in his piece. He declaratively said for no compelling reason whatsoever that Lanny Davis was not his source. Lanny Davis was his source. And now we know that because Lanny Davis is saying it. So this has to be, I mean, the, the, the Bernstein is obviously reeling. CNN is obviously reeling because the, never in a million years did they expect this to happen because it's just never happened right. before. It makes me think back to and wonder about the Watergate situation and, and the things that he did during that time. But he and his uh, his partner at the time, Woodward, they've gone literally in polar opposite directions after that happened and can you kind of compare and contrast the, because you couldn't find a more stark difference in two people who were literally joined at the hip at one time in their lives and now have gone completely i don't know if you ever saw the movie sneakers but sure, uh, yeah. yeah with robert redford and and Sydney uh, uh, yes oh my gosh who was the gentleman that played the the mafia guy ben kingsley ben kingsley those two guys were playing newsmen and one became pretty much the head of the mafia and the other one tried to stay tried and true this feels so much like that and i'm wondering if you could kind of talk to the differences in their lives since then and and, and again for me this ends up this ends carl bernstein's if anybody had any trust in him this this makes it go to me go away yeah with bob woodward what you had was a man who understood post watergate his eminence what that meant and he spent the last 45 years, and he's not been perfect, but he right. has spent the last 45 years being a serious reporter, doing serious reporting, primarily through his books, many of which have been bestsellers, many of which I've read and are very good. He's a legitimate giant in journalism. He is sometimes even willing to buck the narrative for which he will be attacked. Uh, such as when he pointed out, I think it was back in 2013, that Obama did indeed do something that the media was saying he didn't, and then they start, and then the media, all the establishment media, started attacking his senility yeah. and all this. Yep. But Woodward is a real journalist; he's a real guy, and I respect him. I don't always agree with him, but I respect him. He's never lied to me. Bernstein disappeared after Watergate, and that's because he was obviously the lesser of the two. And and you never really heard from him until about the early 2000s, when he came out as a partisan left-wing hack going after the Bush administration. And that's how he has regained his status in the media, being a left-wing hack. But, he, but, but, but the sad thing for Bernstein is that he's just another aging cable news left-wing pundit. And what I think happened here is that he saw a way to become, instead Relevant. of being, instead of dining on something that happened 45 yep. years ago, he saw a way through this fake news to become, uh, feel like a real journalist again, a guy with a real story and an important story. Now, I think he knew it was fake news when he published it because Michael Cohen had already testified sure under did. oath twice that he knew nothing about Trump having foreknowledge of the Trump Tower meeting. Nevertheless, he could hide behind his sources. He could hide behind his unnamed sources because he never thought this was going to happen. And now he looks ridiculous and he looks dishonest. And he is. And I can't. He's both. Well, here's the thing, though. I can't think of anything more terrifying for a tried and true journalist than losing your credibility. I mean, this is Brian Williams, right? Uh, your your entire existence is based – it's almost like being a, a hedge fund manager. If your clients don't trust you, you have no business. Yeah, and it's – you can be biased, and and that's that's that hurts your credibility. But nothing hurts your credibility like lying. Dan Rather, lying. Carl Bernstein, lying. Brian Williams, lying. You never recover from that especially when you don't have the decency, because we all have moral lapses, we all make mistakes, but especially if you don't have the decency to say, I was wrong, I'm sorry, I'm going to make it up. And that's, Bernstein is going to, I called Bernstein in a piece yesterday, the O.J. Simpson of journalism, because what Bernstein is going to do is he just he got off? He's going to get off because he's Carl Bernstein, just like O.J. Simpson got off because he's O.J. Simpson, and just like O.J. Simpson, Bernstein is going to spend the rest of his life living this charade 
where this never happened, and he knows that everyone around him is also living this charade, and that is a terrible way to live. I would argue you're you're done. I mean, in in, in well, <clears throat> excuse me, we're already following a a, a, a never before seen self destruction like CNN. Uh, has done the last 18 to 24 months. But, I mean, this just the, – CNN is, is just sucking the soul out of anybody left on the left uh, and, and their, their credibility and their reliability. And, and they are uh, – and I, I, was, I tweeted it at uh, the big three over there, you know, Lemon and Tapper and Acosta. You know, y- you have the nerve to get offended when you're called fake news and the enemy of the people – uh, when your coworkers continue to do things like this on a daily basis, are you kidding me? Yeah, and it's and you just see it over and over and over again, and they and they're living the OJ charade, pretending yeah. it didn't happen, and the only reason they're getting away with it is because of who they are, because the mafia mentality in the media, even though it's broken up into thirty different organizations, the mafia mentality. Those 30 different families always come together to protect Omerta, to protect the code. So you can lie and you can do what Carl Bernstein did and you can do what Jim Acosta's done. You can tell the lies that Jake Tapper has and you never have to own up to them because of Omerta. They will always protect you. I I don't even know where to go. Hey, I wanted to swing uh, uh, to a little different topic. It's something that's uh, very, very disturbing to me. at Breitbart, you and I, uh, we, we have coworkers uh, who are down at the border um, doing the Cartel Chronicles. And apparently um, a cartel boss, and, and I try to talk to, to this point, uh, working at Breitbart is different. Um, it's different because we are motivated by truth. Whether we agree with it or not, we're motivated by truth. And, and it makes us one of the few places left where you can find it. Um but recently, uh, and, and, and here's the penalty for, for being uh, uh, kind of uh, shackled to truth. Um, the cartel, a cartel boss put a hit out, I don't know any other way to put it, on a Breitbart writer, uh, $100,000 in U.S. dollars uh, for uh, the life of a Breitbart writer. And I, I guess what I'm asking you is, and obviously not to that level, but you have to be feeling blowback uh, because you're on kind of one of the, 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 the epicenters of this liberal lunacy is Hollywood and D.C. And you've been on top of and in front of a lot of these stories coming out of Hollywood and the Catholic Church exposing the hypocrisy and the heinous crimes and the pedophilia, the perversion, the sexual assault, all of this stuff. Um, the left is inciting violence, starting with Maxine Waters. And now we're kind of seeing this stuff come to fruition. And I'm wondering if it's given you kind of a, any sort of a pause. Uh, no, not 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 me personally. I mean, I've never had any sort of a credible death threat or any. I mean, people threaten me, but I've never had a people have said terrible things to me. But that stuff, that stuff has never bothered me. And as far as the the blowback uh, from the media or Hollywood, I have always been gifted with a shocking and unusual lack of ambition. And the only way (laughs) that you can care about what the media think of you or what Hollywood thinks of you is if you want something from them. And I don't want anything from these people. I don't like being on TV. And I think that's an attraction a lot of people in the media use to bait people Gives you a uh, huge advantage. We're supposed to be criticizing them into into laying off. I don't want to be. I don't like leaving the house. I don't want to be on TV. I don't well, want yeah. anything from these people. So I feel no. I, that nothing's ever happened because of that. That it that is in any way cost me any sleep at night. And I got to tell you, I'm very much the same way. I mean, I I I, I got famous already. I I, I did right. that whole fame <laughs> thing. I, I have no desire. I'm not doing any of this to make a name for myself. And, and I, I, I got to tell you, I feel like that puts us at a huge advantage uh, when it comes to, to what what we're after and what the what these people like. It. Well, Jim Acosta lives to be on television now. He is all about being the story instead of reporting the story. And I would argue there's never a situation ever where either one of us wants to be in the story in any capacity. That's and a very different 
approach. And, 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 and you can see people like Bill Kristol, a lot of people in the Never Trump movement, the thing that's driving them is they have that fame virus. They yeah. cannot stand not being on TV and they are willing to sell their <clears throat> souls, literally, to me it's literal, yep. willing to sell their souls piece by piece to hold on to that fame. And you see it happen with a lot of former athletes too. But you, you're a centered guy, you're Kurt, you're Kurt Schilling, you know you're Kurt Schilling, you've done your thing. And me, I'm a little John Nolte, I live in Boone, North Carolina, I just want to watch TV and play with my dogs. That's all I want to do. This right. is my job. So they can't, they can't, they can't tempt me. They can't buy me because I'm not. Right. It's not because I'm ethical. It's just that I don't, they, I don't care about these people. They don't, I don't have want to be on TV. I don't want, want anything from them. Yeah, I was gonna say they don't have anything you want. And no, nope. and, and and probably more important to me is uh, there is no price for your integrity, and that is a a huge differentiator. When it comes to to the, today's media, like I said, uh, Don Lemon, I, I played some sound bites today. That uh, every day, it's it's. It, I, I got to tell you, it's amazing to me at the things that they put out there publicly, uh, and, and and then have the audacity to act as if they're shocked when they get called on it. These are these are just bad people, John, and 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 yeah, very bad, bad intentions. Yeah. And you know that was one of the things my dad could say that would cut me to the core was when so he said, "Well, you know, that's a bad person." That was almost like calling somebody Satan in my family, and 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 that's all I can think of when it comes to talking about other men. These are just bad people, and Carl Bernstein exposed himself as one of those bad people uh, 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 the other day. Hey, John, listen, I really appreciate you catching up with me and and uh, and hopping in here today. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime, Kirk. You know that. All right, pal. You take care of yourself. Breitbart News Tonight with Joel Pollack and, and Rebecca, Rebecca Mansour. I think that it's the epitome of hypocrisy. Unless you fall in line with their liberal agenda, this uniparty globalist liberal agenda, they will never support you. They, they, they use the whole gender issue, of course, as some kind of tool to prop up their, their messaging, but... It's the phoniest thing. Sirius XM Patriot, Channel 125. We want to hear from you. Tweet the show at Garrick38. Once again, here's Kurt Schilling. Joining me now uh, is the one and only James Delingpole, host of Delingpole's podcast on Breitbart Daily. Good morning, James. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well, thanks, Kurt. How are you? I, I'm good. I'm good. It's it's cut, it's hot as balls here in in the New England area for for P- I grew up in Arizona, so I'm used to hot. But these people are uh, they're they're dropping like flies. It's it's hot here. Yeah, but so. you know what? The, I mean, this is serious. I think this is the 85th hottest summer in the U.S. in yeah. in um since in recorded history. Right, which makes it, uh, of course, Just that's global that. warming. I mean, are you scared right. now? Are you worried about global warming? Yeah, I am. I really am. I, I mean, 85th. I mean, Lord knows we could go up into the 70s next summer. So, yeah. Hey, listen, you wrote something that was kind of near and dear to my heart this week, and it's something that is happening here in the United States. And, and you, one only has to look at Twitter to understand it. Uh, it, but I don't think people understand the dangers. And that is, you wrote an article about um, the teaching of history, not just American history, but world history. And uh, the the insufferable uh, left-wing bias that is, I mean, you're seeing teachers come out uh, publicly. And, and there's a couple of audio and video clips on Breitbart now about some some really really disturbing, and I'm using air quotes facts about history that aren't actually true, but 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 I was wondering if you could first, I'd like to get a UK perspective on this first off because our histories are incredibly important um, mileposts and markers as to why and how we got to where we are. Totally, I think your problems are our problems, which is that. You, you think about it. It is very much part of the project of cultural Marxism. If you're going to destroy Western civilization, and that, that is, after all, the aim of, of cultural Marxism, that's what political correctness is really all, all about. One of the first things you have to do is to teach people to forget their history. 
or rather you've got to subvert history for your particular ends. So you think about how history would have been taught back in the day, both in, both in Britain and in the US. I mean, right. let me give you an example of Britain, which is, which is what, what I know best. But young British children were taught about the glories of the empire. They were taught to have pride in their country's achievements. And what this does, of course, is instill in every Briton or every American a, a consciousness that they have won the lottery of life. They, are, they were born American, right. they were born British, and well, that theirs of... is a country worth fighting for and yes, dying it, for. Yes, in many ways... You were born into something that's special. It means something. It matters to be a citizen of the UK, to be a citizen of the United States. Those are they're things that, that that it's the foundational to me. One of the foundational pieces to pride as a person. Well, absolutely. And after all, in the case of the US and the UK, it's not exactly an unjustified pride, is it? I mean, we've done some really great stuff. In history, okay. So we've had a few dodgy moments. I mean, I I think looking back, I've just been reading a, a biography of Ulysses S. Grant, right. and there's a, there's a section in it on on um, Custer, on uh, George Armstrong Custer, uh, and and the the Indian Wars, and it's mm-hmm. it, it's it's pretty clear that America does not have. Uh, its conscience was slightly stained by by its treatment of of the Red Man. I think right. that's a given. But, but equally, there are magnificent moments in history. I might mean, just give yeah. you another example. Ulysses S. Grant's magnanimity towards the defeated Confederacy. You know, he could have, he could have completely crushed and destroyed, destroyed the South. But instead, right. he, he let um, uh, Robert E. Lee, sort of uh, his army, keep their keep their, their sidearms, the officers, and, and, and retreat, you know, um, uh, end the war with, with a degree of honor and self-respect. Right. And I think that probably helped America heal the wounds of, the, of, of its most terrible conflict. So generally, right. America has done the right thing in the world, as has, as has Britain, and we should be proud of our past. Well, I, I got to tell you, there is another conversation to be had, and it's one I think you and I have had in the past, and I've said to you, not every conversation has two sides. Not every not every fight has a middle ground. Um, listen, uh, the, let's be clear about a couple things. When the Civil War started, there wasn't a Republican in the United States that owned a slave. Okay, and and yes, uh, uh, in many ways, uh, Americans were were. Uh, were guilty of atrocities, uh, but let's be very clear about a couple things. The Indians were slaughtering each other before we arrived on the shores of America. Okay, and th- th- the fact of the matter is that that every country ever formed and taken in the in in history that that you can think of was taken by conquest. Doesn't make it okay, but it makes it the world's history. And 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 lastly, the atrocities that that befell the Native Americans. The, the ringleader was Andrew Jackson. There, there's nobody in history who took more of an advantage, who was more uh, 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 evil towards the Indians and the things that Andrew Jackson did uh, in, in the land buys and all, the, all of the horrible, heinous crimes he did for political, for political means, by the way, for, for votes and yeah. for land. Than, than, than Andrew Jackson, the founder of the, the you know the Democratic Party, as we've come to know. Yeah, he was today. an amazing. He was amazingly horrible, wasn't he? I mean, I was shocked. He he's such a villain. How on yes. earth did he get to be running America? Well, same way Obama did, I think. Uh, <laughs> That's a very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. But but, but the also, unfortunate I mean, how part. How did Hitler come to power? You know, they, these right. people won the popular vote, didn't they? Well, uh, it, it, yeah, there was some arm twisting going on as far as, as Hitler goes. But but the fact of the matter was Andrew Jackson came to power uh, by killing Indians, by moving Indians, by taking their land and by giving it and selling it at, at pennies on the dollar to his political friends. And, and that's not uh, uh, debatable. That's factual American history. And, and yeah. you know, you talked about, you know, we both have our problems. At one time, you were our problem. 
uh, you know, and we all fix that. We, we, we can't, you know, we are the only country to ever fight a civil war. Uh, and what was it? Three quarters of a million casualties, mostly white and some black as well, um, to end slavery. It's a sin that we have, we have tried to, to, uh, uh, pay back and, and give back and, and fix to some degree. Uh, but the fact of the matter is that the left would have you believe that, uh, the Civil War never ended. I mean, you listen to some of the sound bites. Uh, it, it's just amazing to me how how out of reality and how out of touch the American left they do, is. They don't, they don't want it to end, of course. That, that's, right. that's the problem. And, and you saw that in the Obama era. I mean, you know, the left loves to, loves to describe how divisive Trump is. But look at Trump's popularity with black voters. He's got the highest, the highest popularity with black voters, what, since I think the 1960s? He's, it's yeah, Obama it's, who was, it was under right. Obama that Black Lives Matter and all that kind of racial tense, tension yep. was stoked up. It's the left doing it, not, not conservatives, who I think want to get along. Well, think about this, uh, James. You had uh the the civil rights movement in the 60s and just recently you had antifa running a black woman out of a restaurant in philadelphia because of her political yeah. views and, and to on tuesday on cnn we played the soundbite earlier don lemon was defending antifa and claimed that it's kind of living up to its fighting fascism moniker i can't to me uh, listen i don't know other uh, that's just stupid. That's just ignorant of, of fact. The Antifa is made up of fascists, and what they're doing is acting fascist in, in their de- desire to quell speech they disagree with. That's what fascism is about. Yes. That's how it works. That's how it starts. And and here you have a, a, a gentleman on one of the most failing news networks in the history of our country, but he's espousing the fact that he's defending an organization that ran a black woman out of a restaurant. I agree. I agree. By the way, Kirk, can we just talk? I, I always hate it when I write a really, really good piece for Breitbart, and, and it kind of gets buried, and uh, maybe it'll get time on the homepage later on. But I wrote a piece yesterday about Trump derangement syndrome oh my manifesting God. itself in all these kind of weirdo eulogies towards John McCain. Did, did you notice this? I did, and it, it it it's not a small thing, James. It's a very important thing to 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 take note of because it, it's manifesting itself in 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 many ways. And you wrote an article the other day about how it's making conservatives kind of lazy uh, and and cowardly. And my God, it, it's it, it's it's right in front of us. I mean, I was just I was just genuinely puzzled because I can tell you, it was it's as, almost as bad over on this side of the pond as in the in the U.S. I just looked on Twitter, and it was wall to wall tributes to John McCain, and I didn't know much about John McCain. I mean, I thought you know, okay, I he, he I used him in the same way as I'd view say uh, Michael Dukakis. You know, he was a, right. a failed presidential candidate who 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 sort of disappeared into the kind of the obscure annals of history. And yeah, he had done some good things and he, and he was in the NAM and he got shot down and he was, he was quite brave. Right. But I didn't really know until I, I, I read a bit more about him, about, about his past. And I have to say, there, 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 was, the, there's a, there was a profile done in 2008 when he was uh, the presidential candidate, done in Rolling Stone. And it was a pretty thorough examination of his past. And I thought, well, this guy is not the hero that he's being made out to be by the never Trumpers and by the Democrats and all the other people singing praise at him. And I was thinking, this is there is so much lying going on, so much propaganda designed to unseat Trump, who I, I, I increasingly believe is the greatest president of my lifetime, and it is yeah. saving America. And I think we've yeah, just no. got to point out when when the other side are doing this, or when, when our own side, when the I, in never Trumpers ought to be on our side because they are notionally conservatives. We need to point this stuff out and not let them get away with it. Well, yeah, and and but but here's the thing: is it not uh, the left uh, owns the platforms right now? The the, the 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 left is trying as hard as it can to make sure that and, t- and to a country that's being mistaught and misinformed, the left is trying to add another layer of 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 misinformation, kind of live and in person. 
uh, as you and I speak. And that, to me, is, it, I mean, my God, when you see what some of these professors are saying on campuses and what these students are coming out of college. Uh, it's unbelievable. It is, it is it, it, absolutely. It, it, yeah. No, you're right. It, it is. It's unbelievable. It, but the, the, the things that are happening in America are becoming less and less unbelievable by the day because they're becoming, I mean, this Florida just uh, in, a, in a Democratic primary just elected a full, another full-blown socialist uh, to to run for the governorship, and uh, 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 they elected a they're claiming you know a win by electing a black man who is currently under FBI investigation for corruption, but that apparently doesn't matter because he's not the president. Yeah, and what's happening in uh, in the judiciary in New Mexico for heaven's sake? What's that yeah. all about? Yeah, well. The the the, uh, the 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 things that that are happening at our border and the things that are happening at our border states, you've basically got a situation in California where you had uh, a, a, a Medicare free for all uh, and open borders candidate win a recent primary, and the, the, I, I I don't know any other way to explain this, uh, James. If you're going to open your borders and allow uh, illegals to uh, to to afford the same rights for free health care that you are the rest of the world, how many how many illegals do you think are going to come to California to get that medical treatment they can't get in Mexico or Venezuela or Brazil? The, the state is I already close to bankrupt. Pretty much limitless supplies of illegals. Right, right. No, I mean, it's it, it, the state is already over, uh, close to half a billion dollars in debt to the federal government. It is the it is the uh, the hallmark of haves and have-nots. It, it has the largest homeless problem. It has... They're having such a nightmarish time in California that the sales of RVs, recreational vehicles, are going through the roof because people can't afford homes and they're living in RVs. And they're and and by the way, there is a job you can get for I believe it's uh, uh, hundred and fifty dollars uh, or 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 maybe it's fifteen or eighteen dollars an hour picking up human excrement in the streets because it's it's legal now to go to That's the bathroom. Like it's all over San Francisco, San Francisco, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I think that maybe there should be a, an ideology tax whereby all the kind of sultans of Silicon Valley who are advocating open, vo- open borders should be made to pay for their, their desire to invite all these people in. I mean, if, if, if they want the luxury of that, then they should pay for it. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't know how it would work, but they, they seem to have a, have a, a, a spare door or two. Hey, listen, uh, followers of the podcast and myself included, wish you nothing but the best in your uh, your trip to Germany. Get well, all right, buddy? Oh, yeah, my Lyme disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, you take care of yourself. Thank you. I, I've, I've taken to um, to changing up the end of this podcast from uh, doing Winners and Losers, which, uh, while I think can be funny at times, I, 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 I would rather spend a couple minutes talking about something that matters to me. Um, well, because it's my podcast, and I think I have something interesting to say, which uh, uh, sometimes might not be true. But anyway, um, I grew up. <clears throat> excuse me, I grew up in a family, uh, a, a military family. My father served, my uh, my cousins served, my brother-in-law served, my grandparents served. <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to serve uh, until I realized I had the ability to throw a ball fairly hard, somewhat accurately. Um, but I grew up, uh, a military brat, uh, living on bases from Fort Leonard Wood to, uh, to Elmendorf Air Force Base where I was born to Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. And that is to say, I grew up with an enormous amount of respect for the men and women in uniform. Um, I've been over to the Middle East twice, uh, uh and what an honor it was and it is and always will be one of the highlights of my life to be able to visit our troops and, and, and thank them. Um, all this is to say that I have a profound amount of respect for for men and women uh, who serve this country, first responders as well. And I, I recognize something. Um, racism is inherently a horrible thing. Uh, it is something that humans do and have. Uh, I would like to think in this country that we fought a civil war to try and end it. We've marginalized the groups that uh, espouse it. Um, the KKK is a, a meaningless group of white trash now uh, who have no say or influence in, in, in any way, shape, or form, except for the empowerment the left's giving them. But a recent trend, <clears throat> excuse me, 
has has gotten to me to the point where I, I feel like I need to say something here. Um, the left, starting in the Obama administration, when it began to turn its back on our law enforcement officers, starting in Cambridge, uh, every single time our president uh, spoke out at the time, he spoke out on the wrong side of the law. I believe that administration has blood on its hands. I believe that administration was directly uh, influential and responsible for murders and assassinations that began to happen at near record numbers. Five men in, uh, uh, five officers in Dallas were executed um, by uh, a member of the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and now you are seeing uh, the left actively, open, openly, and willingly voting members into our government, voting people into their primaries who want to abolish ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the people that live at our borders, that work at our borders, which are some of the most dangerous borders in the world, uh, our borders with South America. They fight against the cartel that is uh, has unlimited funds. But these men and women uh, kiss their wives and hug their kids and go off to work each day with the legitimate concern they may never come home again. The people that make the laws that these men and women are paid to enforce are now turning their backs on the law enforcement agents that work for them. I would have to think that five years ago you would have laughed your ass off at that statement. I would have thought five years ago, or maybe ten years ago, not five years ago, because during the the, the Obama administration it was cool to be anti-police. But the fact of the matter is our government is 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 has started a trend and the, the voters are backing that trend in, in the socialist capitals of uh, uh, California and D.C. And, and in the New England area, in New York. They're voting in people who uh, are running on a platform of abolish ICE, abolish a law enforcement agency that is defending the health, well-being, and safety of your and I family. In, in many ways, I don't view these these gentlemen and these women as different than our soldiers. They're on the front lines. They're and 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 in many ways, they're at a disadvantage like no other in that they're being put uh, up against an opponent that has no budget. And I want to say, <clears throat> excuse me, for the few police officers, men, and women, first responders out there that may listen to this show. Uh, I want you to understand. It may seem like a very challenging and trying time, and I'm sure it is. But please know that a majority of us, and us by us, I mean God-loving, uh, Constitution, uh, or God-fearing, God fearing, Constitution loving Americans, uh, we thank the, the, the ground we walk on that you're here, that you work and do the things you do. We thank God for the fact that you work and live in our country. Uh, I just want you to make sure you know for a fact that more, many more of us appreciate, respect, and love what you do than, um, than don't. And that, that was it. I, I just wanted to make sure you understand that. We, there are uh, a lot more of us out there than, than I think the media would have you know. Um, but uh, that, 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 I, I, it's, it's gotten to the point where I can't even see straight when I hear this, this stuff happening. It makes me sick to my stomach. And uh, I want you all to know that that's not the way it is in, in most of this country. Uh, we appreciate you. We thank you. God bless you. Uh, stay safe and, and get home to your families tonight. Uh, because we need you there on manning your post tomorrow. So you guys have a wonderful day. We'll be closing out the week tomorrow. Uh, in the meantime, God bless, take care, and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Sunny's Corner with Sunny Johnson. I want to actually take a couple of the references to Donald Trump from hip-hop. And then we're going to try to see if we can figure out why they like Donald Trump. Jay-Z said, I'm at the Trump International. Ask for me. Raekwon said, I'm the black Trump. They are comparing themselves to what he represents. His wealth, his achievement. Capitalism. Sunny's Corner with Sunny Johnson. Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. East on Sirius XM Patriot. 125.